Oh, that, it, this is announced me lots of minerality. And there's a lemon zest also. And I see Mira here, like she like, like not I can't wait her. for you to try this. <laughs> Um, but I am still getting the, the white flower that you're talking about, like some kind of delicate kind of white flower mm, on the, mm, the nose. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. I've had two sips now and I'm like, wow, I think Carl's going to like this one. I mm. like it. <laughs> at some point, when we meet people in person, you guys get to see the real Carl at some point, because I'm pretty sure he censors it a little bit. But yeah, sometimes your expressions, Carl, when you're not being recorded are priceless. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so Holy yeah. shit. There Holy you go. Shit. Okay. This is young, <laughs> this still in his, like, this is like still like so energetic. It's still like pushing, pushing acidity, that lemon zest. But in the middle, this is more like lemon meringue. It's definitely more lemon meringue in there uh, with maybe like a slice of fresh ginger in the middle. Call this. Mm. Okay. Okay, now, okay, let's let's talk about the noble. Okay, let's let's talk about that. I already had more expression. I already have more wow factor in that wine that I had in here. Like, and if I base my 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 preliminary score, okay, because I'm nothing near done to think about that wine, to talk about it, because I just, just had my first sip. It's the first time I had a taste right there, and it's already blowing the, the Noble Ridge out of the water. And nothing wrong with the Noble Ridge. Don't make me wrong here. Don't quote that I don't like the one from Noble Ridge. That's not, I gave it a 93, 94 point between that. But this, the intense, I got it, intensity. The intensity of flavor are still pulsing right now. Woof, woof. That lemon meringue with that slice of fresh ginger right in the middle is just still pulsing. And there's a minerality, a flinty thing. And Mira, lift your lips. Do you get the saltiness? Mm -hmm. I love when that happens with a wine. Yeah. Very shy nose, though. There's nothing announcing that from the nose. Like, nothing. This wine is definitely a journey. Like lots of lots this of is super okay. Wait a minute, you wait a whoops, wait a minute. <laughs> Are you decanting a Chardonnay? I do. I do. Bad boy. This is I great. Do. Because I can, I see so much more in there. Even if it's giving me, I, I feel like there's a tension in there. Who just want to give me more, and so see here, how cloudy is that? It's unfiltered. These wines are all unfiltered, unfine, unfiltered, all natural. And for people who tell me like that, unfine, unfiltered doesn't help with the like to preserve the wine properly well guess what this is 2017 and it's still crawling like this is there's not even like walking yet like there's so much more to come in that like, how far is that is known for aging their wines as long as they need to be aged so they had some shards that were like 10 years age before they even released them because um uh, francois morisette the winemaker just said no that one's not ready yet doesn't want to tell us about it yet. <laughs> so they age the, their, their Chardonnays for quite some time and sometimes. But this one, clearly, 
was more uh, forthcoming. Okay, so how about Mira? While I'm still dis dissecting this, uh, this, oh, I start start to smell a little bit more here. Uh, can you please tell us a little bit what you learned about Per Morissette when you did all the research? Because Francois Morissette is a pretty special, uh, pretty special guy, right? He is. Let me see if I still have a picture of him. I don't have a picture of him here, but I do have a picture of the winery. So you guys might have seen this on our uh, Wine Wednesday today. So this is actually their new uh, restaurant. They have a really beautiful restaurant that if uh, Anthony Bourdain was still around, and there's there's Francois Mars at the winemaker in the middle. Uh, on the he's got the longer hair, I think. Uh, is that him? No, maybe not. So if Anthony Bourdain were still around, I think this is a restaurant he would want to go visit. It's that kind of place, right? I don't Absolutely. know if, uh, if you guys put Absolutely. in the comments if you, if you enjoyed Anthony Bourdain's shows, uh, but we sure did. Very authentic, very much about like, sure, a lot of these restaurants were like crazy Michelin starred restaurants, but he was just really into the getting to know the stories and the authenticity of the food. And I think this is the kind of restaurant where, yeah, they just, they have certain beliefs about how to do food well. They don't give a fuck, oh, excuse, sorry. They don't give a shit about what other people think, what other people would say, what other people uh, uh, would suggest. They have their belief and they have the limit a little bit cocky, you know? Like, you know what, <laughs> that's, the, that's the way we do things. We don't give a crap about what other people say. We're going to do it our way. But guess what? When I get this, I'm like, yeah. And when I taste Cuvée Madeleine Cabernet Franc, I say, oh, geez, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. what you're doing, people. I don't want to <laughs> argue. I don't want to <laughs> argue. Sometimes it kind of come across a little cocky. But guess what? This, that, that works. It works pretty darn good. You bet. So, yeah. You know, so have, it's it's fun. There you go. That's the recipe. Kim, come back with the picture and I'll uh, have a few things because we have uh, Stephen, Stephen Polish uh, here with us. He's the general manager at Desert Hills uh, in on the uh, on the Black Sage bench, neighbor of Nota Bene. Stephen is great to deal with. We love their wine. But, and Stephen is from Ontario. And so him and his stepbrother moved west Western Canada five years ago. And they know, they study wine in the Niagara region. And here's the, the trail here, what Stephen says about, uh, about Pearl Morissette, that the 2011 Chardonnay from Pearl was his favorite wine. Also, he's saying that he thought it was a Chassagne Montrachet when he tasted blind. Just to put people in perspective, Chassagne Montrachet is one of the top sub, top sub, top sub appellation in Burgundy. So, uh, so yeah. And also he's mentioning that uh, he has he had the privilege to go to the restaurant and um, and it is absolutely world class. Steven, I have the trademark on world class terminology here in Canada. Okay? <laughs> Don't use my world class. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm glad I'm that you're in my team. Every every time we send an email, I think I'm like, oh, Carl, we're using world class again. World class. And it's like, yeah, no, that's just Carl's uh, word. Well, I'm using <laughs> world class enough that one of our competitors who just started their business copying us, and now they're using world class as their tagline. I'm like, really? Are you really doing that? This is my freaking line, buddy. Anyway. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. but... So now, okay, go ahead, please keep going. Oh, so what was I going to say? I was going to say that uh, the winery uh, was started. So Francois Marisset, the winemaker, uh, he became a winemaker, studied in France. He learned all the traditional methods in France. In, Bur with, in Burgundy. With some of the best winemakers down there. And then he came back because he's actually just like our Carl. He is from Quebec. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and so he came back to Canada and he wanted to discover what's special about the Canadian terroir and let's make wine here that expresses that. And so he actually got to meet with um, Mel Pearl. They were friends and Mel Pearl is a, a land developer in Toronto. So he, uh, Mel Pearl finances the winery and Francois Morissette is the winemaker. And he doesn't like to call himself a winemaker. No. No, he's a, he's a vineyard. 
He's, he's a, a vigneron. vigneron. He likes that vigneron. because he, he's saying he's basically listening to the grapes and the, the ground and, and raising the wine through that. So he's A to Z. He doesn't see himself just taking over once the grapes are ready. You know what I mean? That's so it's kind of cool. Um, well, because that vigneron, that vigneron, that's what they use in Burgundy, right? For the, the old generation, what the only thing they knew, it was a, like... The, the old man, the family were working the vineyard, harvesting the grape themselves, bringing the, the, the grapes in the, at the facility, pressing, doing everything. The vigneron is more the everything around the wine business from the ground all the way to the bottle done by the family. So, so that's what a little bit of vigneron means. So, so the more I get to know winemakers and, and wineries, I realize this is a, there's a lot of art in this. Like, I feel like sometimes I encounter like a Picasso who's a winemaker so passionate about what they're doing that it's more of an art. There's a lot of science involved. Um, but the beauty is that with the Pearl Morissette, um, they were able to sort of shave off decades of what it would normally take a winery because they had the financial backing from Mel Pearl to just do what they want to do. No, and and not not Mel. About, we're going to lose money on this. We're, you know, what if it doesn't work? All this kind of stuff. So they can take risks, which is amazing. But also that, that, that Mel was, that Mel was be believed so much in the skills of Francois. And tell, just tell me how much it costs. I don't need to know the whole thing, the breakdown of every operation. Just tell me how much you need. How much do you need? How much is going to cost? Boom. It's a, it's a blank check. So now go do what you do. You're a freak. And he is a freak. And the wine <laughs> in there, it's absolutely freakish what's in there. In a really good way. In a really good way. And now, like, it's, it's opening bad. up. Right? It's, very it's opening up right now. I'm getting a little bit more of the nose of the 2015. I had that little caramel coming up a little bit on the nose. Oh, geez. It's changed, too, just sitting here in the glass for an hour. Amazing. You can, if you're watching this later, you can rewind to near the beginning where I took a few sneaky sips and I was like, whoa, you can probably see from my facial expression that this is different. Yeah, it's very nice. So there's definitely something evolving like in your mouth, like starting zippy, starting lemon, but moving towards the, the yeah, you can feel the oak coming through right at the mid palate, and and I can feel the flavor in uh, uh, in getting more intense mm. by the second when you hit like the third of the wine. It kind of like take a little bit to start, and when you hit the third, boom! Now you can feel it every second. You got like like a little dancer and dancer and more concentrated until you hit that caramel hint in the two third. And after that, it comes back a little bit on lemon and, uh, and finish with some white pepper, something a little bit gingery at the end. So yeah. Woo. So what's crazy, Carl, is you're, you're talking. And since you started talking, I took a sip. It's still going on my tongue. Like I'm sensing different things at the front of the tongue and the back. This rarely happens with a wine. Like when when I hear you say, "Oh, it's got a long finish," I'm like, "Oh yeah, it has a long." It oh for quite a while, but this one, like it's still going. I'm talking now. I still feel sort of this. Oh yeah, from oh, yeah. It. you know that that wine. You know that that wine in five years it would be indescriptible. I will not be able oh to my find my words in five years of that. So this okay, is to get you a bottle. It's the Disneyvm, which is actually your lucky number, Carl, isn't yeah, it? Your lucky number. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So huh. what I would say here, this is definitely a ninety-five point plus. This is a no-brainer. There's a ninety-five plus here. Uh, yeah, and I want to know, I, I want to wait a little bit more because, and a little bit like the Madeleine was doing, the Madeleine took a little while to open up um, the, the Cabernet Franc. 
And when it hit the stride, it was unstoppable. So I think that <laughs> thing is doing the exact same thing here. So a little later on tonight, I will definitely uh, let you know uh, on my tasting note how everything ends up. What's the... Uh, so I was, it's... it's a, Archer, you have some pretty darn good question here. I love it. So where else can you find this style in the world? I would say this is Burgundy. Uh, in Not in a nutshell, because there is the unique, uh, that unique Niagara acidity, that unique thing that you can't recreate anywhere else, which is really typical Niagara. But... This is this is Burgundy. This is like in the like and exactly like what Steven said earlier. This is Montrachet style. That's where he learned. He works the Grand Cru in Montrachet, and I can see that in there um, because this is definitely definitely not uh, California. And if you take Napa Valley, because it's like definitely not Napa. There's another region in California, is the Russian River Valley, where produced a little different style of Chardonnay. This is not Russian River either. Um, I had some outstanding Argentinian uh, Chardonnay from really high in altitude, the bone hash and the white bone from Catena. This is not that. There's a little bit more creaminess in there. So um, this is not Australian Chardonnay. That, so it leads me straight to Burgundy and in the Montrachet region. So that's where I'm, that's where I'm getting it. Um, maybe a little bit of Merceau, uh, but more typically Montrachet. Sorry, I had to blow up a, an inflatable toy here. So <laughs> for our kids. <laughs> but yeah, great question. I love it. Yeah, yeah, and now more and more the spice in the back end starting to develop, to open up. I have my uh, Instagram was going to die very soon. My phone is uh, 